Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal and welcome to Porto or welcome to my generic hotel room in Porto. But trust me, I am here. I am in Portugal and it is match day. It is Champions League knockout action time for Arsenal. It's been a long, long time since we've been able to say that. Real sense of excitement. I've just been down having breakfast downstairs in the hotel. Loads of Arsenal fans in here. You can just sort of listen to that buzz, hear that buzz how excited everyone is. And they're all going to be heading down, I imagine, to the bars and the pubs around this very beautiful city that I'm looking out the window. I can see a bit cloudy today, sunny yesterday, a bit cloudy today. I think it's going to rain tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I'm sure the Arsenal fans, I was certainly in a good voice last night, went out for a couple of drinks in the evening and you could hear the you could hear the chants sort of ringing around the city, around there, sort of drifting down over the valley by the river. Just hear chants from Arsenal fans packed into the bars around the city so lots of them here it's going to be one hell of an atmosphere and why not because it is match day arsenal versus porto at the drag out um i can't wait it was there yesterday for the press conference um Mikel Arteta and gabriel sneaked down to the sort of pitch side walked up one of these tunnels before quickly getting <laughs> hurried away by security because i didn't have the right pass to get down to the pitch side but i took a couple of these photos that you can see there if you're watching on youtube and it's a wonderful stadium really really nice and um, I was just sort of standing there thinking it is going to be absolutely roaring in there tonight. Can't wait to see it full with Arsenal fans, with Porto fans. And this is where you want Arsenal to be. This is where Arsenal deserve to be. It's where for so long we took for granted that they should be. It's been a long time though since then. Seven years since Arsenal had a knockout tie in the Champions League. That's what they're facing tonight. So we'll talk about that. In today's show, we'll look at what Mikel Arteta had to say at his press conference, we'll look at the latest team news, we'll do the predicted 11, got some um, comments from you guys about what you want to see happen tonight, who you want to see starting. So let's get stuck into it. Like I said, I was at the press conference yesterday, it was at 7.30pm local time over here, uh, Mikel Arteta speaking, Gabriel speaking as well before him. Uh, Arteta was in decent enough mood, um, seemed, you know, sometimes you get to these press conference late in the evening they're just flown in from uh, London and you can tell it's just like oh, I just want to get back to the hotel which is understandable but he wasn't like that yesterday I thought he was in good mood you can tell he's excited and he should be it's a massive moment for him as well as it is for the players it's also a massive moment for him he's never done this before he's never managed at this stage before in the knockout rounds of the Champions League so it's a big moment for Mikel Arteta and I think he probably knows as well that he's got a fair few sort of questions hanging over him about his ability to get Arsenal through knockout stages in European competition because it's something he's not really had much success in yet since he's been at the club. So it's a big night for him. And he said, look, he was asking about Porto and about the sort of strengths of the team by the local Portuguese journalists over here. He said, I'm really impressed with Porto. I know the manager really well and the history that they have. They have a lot of experience in the competition. They have many qualities in many phases of play. Uh, that's why they are always competitive in the European competitions. It's a really tough opponent that we are going to face, but at the same time, we are very excited. It's been seven years that we haven't been here and we are full of energy and excitement to play the game we want. He touched on it there. Seven years. It's it is pretty remarkable, isn't it, that Arsenal have been away from that competition for so long. He was asked, as you can imagine, because Fabio Vieira signed for Arsenal from Porto, so all the Porto-based journalists over here were very interested in Fabio Vieira. He was asked about him a couple of times in a press conference, said, I'm really happy with him, but sad at the same time, because it's been a tough period for him, especially with the last injury, because he's had some momentum and he's had and he put some performances together before he got injured. That broke up his rhythm again, like last season, but he's an enormous talent and we're going to get the best out of him. He was then asked whether, you know, have you been using Vieira's Porto expertise to sort of go behind the scenes and find out any secrets? He says he's been really pushing because he wanted to be here, that's for sure. Having an insider, someone who has experience and has lived the culture and the club, gives you a lot of information. It's very important in Europe to understand the context of the game, what type of opponent they are, and what type of atmosphere you're going to be facing. And he can give us some really important information. Vieira obviously has travelled with the squad, so he is close now to returning. Whether he actually plays tonight, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, he's not going to start. I think we know that. But whether he comes on, we'll have to wait and see. But it's good to have him back involved. As Arteta said, you know, at the start of the season, he was putting in some decent performances. And then the injury really sort of hampered him. And I think he lost his way a little bit before the injury. His performances dropped a bit, but I think he was carrying that injury. And Arsenal were hoping they were going to be able to sort of manage it without having an operation. Ultimately, they had to do the, do the operation. That's why he's been out. But hopefully he can get back to some of that form he showed in, in flashes at the start of the season. 
talking about the sort of Champions League as a whole, as I said, seven years since Arsenal been in, but remarkably, it's been 14 years since Arsenal got past this stage of the competition, which blew my mind yesterday. I hadn't really thought about it. The last time they did it was when they beat Porto in that game where they lost over here, but then won 5 0. So um, Nicholas Bender scored a hat trick and Sammy Nasri scored that wonderful individual goal. It was the last time Arsenal have got through to the. Um, to the quarterfinal stage, which is just absolutely mad. Um, Mikel said, it's great that we have earned the right to be here. It's been seven years since we've been at this table for this kind of match and 14 years since we've been able to go to the next stage. That's the challenge. That is what is ahead of us. We are really excited to face it and go for it with full belief. That is for sure. He was then asked if this was a chance for the team to really prove you know, how good they are, not just in, in England, but the, uh, European as well. He said, yeah, it's true because we don't have the experience. That's the reality. 95% of the players have not played in this competition. They have never played in the last 16, and I haven't. But we have so much enthusiasm and energy as well and willingness with a point to prove that we are good enough and want to be there. That's our desire and the passion and that we're really going to play the game tomorrow. So of course, tonight, because he's he was saying that yesterday. Um that hunger that he talks about, and you know, there is an inexperience in Arsenal in Champions League, that's no doubt, because they haven't been in the competition for seven years. So, as Mikel says, 95% of the players, you know, take out Havertz, take out Jorginho, um, Thomas Party. Basically, no one's played in this competition before for Arsenal. Um, and and so it is an experience. They are going to be learning on the job. They breezed through the group stages, didn't have any problems there, albeit against teams that you could probably say were more Europa League than Champions League. That's going to change now. Whoever they come up against. If they get through this stage, whoever they come up against in the latter stages of the knockout rounds, they're going to be a you know, top quality European competition. So they're going to have to learn on the job. But one thing I see about this team and I believe about this team is I don't think they will under that sort of spotlight and that sort of pressure. I think they'll thrive in it. You've already seen how they're taken. Like, look at how Saka took to, the Mar took to the Champions League. Look at how Martinelli took to it in the group stages. There was no stage fright. There was nothing like that. It was just like, we belong here. We've been waiting a long time to get this opportunity. We belong here and we want to take the opportunity. And I kind of feel like that's what they're going to do tonight. I feel really confident. <laughs> and I'm so pessimistic normally. And I feel really confident about Arsenal's chances, not just tonight, but showing in this competition that they are one of the best teams in Europe. You know, I genuinely believe Arsenal can win this competition. I'm not saying they're going to win it by any means, and if but I think they're good enough to win it. They have to have a lot of luck along the way. The draw will have to go their way. Big moments in big games will have to go their way. Decisions will probably have to go their way. But that's the same with any team in this competition. But Arsenal are third favourites with the bookies for the Champions League. And the bookies aren't stupid. You know, the third favourites for a reason, because they are a very good team. So I do... I genuinely feel like they've got a good chance of, of doing something very special in this competition this season. Um, but they've got to beat Porto, <laughs> first of all. They've got to get through this. And Porto are a good team with good pedigree in European competition. And you can't take them lightly at all. And I don't think they will. And I think that's a good thing for Arsenal is I don't think they will. I don't get any sense that the player is going to take it lightly. I didn't get that from what Gabriel was speaking at the press conference yesterday. He was very adamant, you know, that they are fully focused on this. They know how difficult it's going to be. Mikel Arteta and the coaching staff certainly aren't going to let them take it lightly. So big game. And I'm really intrigued to see how Arsenal cope with it, how they deal with it and how they play tonight, knowing that it's a two-legged game as well, of course, because you don't win or lose it tonight. Um, you can put yourself in a very good position or you can put yourself in a very bad position, but you don't win or lose it tonight. And I think Arsenal need to remember that. And I think they will remember that when it comes to how they're going to play so team news wise, of course, as I said, Fabio Vieira has trebled. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a picture of him at training yesterday, all smiles. And behind him, there is Thomas Partey, all smiles in full training for Arsenal. Now, Thomas Partey hasn't travelled. Vieira has. Partey hasn't. He stayed at home while he continues to get fit. Arsenal thought it wasn't worth risking him. Fabio Vieira was a good sort of week ahead of um, Thomas Partey when it came to training. He was doing a lot of training last week. Um, Thomas Partey wasn't, he was only out sort of doing stuff by himself last week, he's just come back to the group, so it wouldn't have made any sense to bring him over here, so it's going to continue training at London Colney, potentially could be in the squad to play Newcastle at the weekend, which is great news, having those two back, there's no Tommy Asu, he's still injured, there's no Jesus, he's still injured, there's no Zinchenko, he's still injured, uh, Aiden Heaven, young 17 year old has come over, he's with the squad, James Sweet was on the bench against um, Burnley at the weekend, he's in the squad young player, can play sort of right back uh, or right midfield as well. So they're over in the squad. So that's the latest team news ahead of tonight when it comes to Arsenal. In terms of my predicted 11, I'm sticking with this as my predicted 11. I was sitting in the press conference room, all, the, all us sort of Arsenal journalists who were there, and we're all sort of debating our predicted 11s for this game last night. And there was lots of difference in opinion. Um, 
about who was who we believe was going to play. This is what I went with. I think Mark Manbrines from PA, uh, he agreed. He thought this was what they were going to go with, but plenty of other people had Martinelli starting and going in the usual 4-3-3. I just feel like he's going to bring Jorginho in for this game. Whether that means that Havertz plays as a nine or Trossard plays at the nine and Martinelli plays, I don't know. Like This is guesswork. Again, this is just a predicted 11. This isn't based on any inside information. But I just feel the whole, given it's a two-legged tie, given Jorginho's experience and Arsenal's potential lack of experience throughout the team in the Champions League, I just feel like he might bring Jorginho in for this one and play him alongside Declan Rice like he did in the recent games against Liverpool. And Arsenal played very, very well and Jorginho played very, very well in those games. So if he does that, obviously the back four, picks itself at the moment with the injury. So it's going to be White Sleeper, Gabriel Tomiasu. I think David Ryder will be in goal. Can't see Aaron Ramsdale coming in for this. Um, Jorginho and Rice is a sort of holding pair and then more of a sort of 4-2-3-1 formation. So Odegaard is a 10. I've gone Trotard on the left, so no Martinelli, and Saka on the right with Kai Havertz as a central striker. Now, it could easily be, easily be Martinelli on the left and Trossard as a nine and Havertz on the bench or Trossard on the bench. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But that's what I'm thinking um, when it comes to the team selection. A lot of people in the discussion yesterday in the press conference were saying, you've got to play Martinelli. There's going to be space for Arsenal to exploit. It's not going to be like a Premier League game when you're sitting back facing 10 defenders, basically, and Martinelli will be able to, could, you know, really sort of revel in that wide open space. A lot of you have been getting in touch as well um sort of giving your thoughts on it um joey tim there says agree Jorginho starts he's experienced in champions league game it's an away game can't take any team for granted at this stage Dharma says ideally the same team from the previous um i i sorry i just had a whatsapp notification that's thrown me off track there royal, royal nostradama says ideally the same team from the previous two games and ideally able to take off saka martinelli and rice by the 75th minute madness to think that a near 41 year old pepe will be defending against us that is crazy uh score prediction ideally seven nil not sure that's going to happen but i'll go three one to the arsenal magoo says i can see Jorginho starting and Havertz going to the false nine would be harsh on trossard but i wouldn't be surprised if arteta wants some more experience and control away in the CLC. That's kind of what I am leaning to when I've gone with my predicted 11. Just think that added experience with Jorginho and the and the quality of Jorginho, the control he can gives you in midfield, um, I think might just sway. But uh, there's a couple more here. One from Cathal says, Martinelli 100% starts this game. Porto won't play a low block. We've seen uh, what Newcastle did to Saka and Martinelli last season at the Emirates. So that could be a good game for Jesus and Trossard at the weekend. And then Kay Katana says, in my opinion, it's imperative that Martinelli starts. He's been one of our best performers in the Champions League so far. And his pace is such a good outlet. Finally, he always performs well in the biggest game. So there are some of your views ahead of what you want to see tonight. I wouldn't be disappointed, whoever, you know, if, if Trossard starts, if Martinelli starts, I wouldn't be disappointed at all. I do think Havertz will start in this game. I'd be surprised if Havertz doesn't play, whether that be in the midfield or as a central striker, we'll have to wait and see. But I think Havertz will probably start. And like I said, I just think for Jorginho, it could be a really, really... Um, I just think he could be a really important part of this Champions League sort of jigsaw for Arsenal going forward this season. The, the return of Thomas Partey is really interesting in terms of how much we're going to see from Jorginho. If Partey can stay fit between now and the end of the season, you know, how much game time Jorginho has will be really interesting to watch. You know, will Partey absolutely move ahead of Jorginho? You would think so, 100%, but I still think Jorginho's got a big part to play. Um, but Thomas Partey's got a huge part to play. If Partey can get fit, can stay fully fit between now and the end of the season, you add him into the squad, especially before the games that the Yeti had, um, White Hart Lane, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, whatever you call that place. Now, um, at Old Trafford, if you've got a fit Thomas Partey in there to play next to Declan Rice, it could be so, so huge such a crucial stage of the season so it's really nice for Arsenal to get some of those injured players back with Vieira and Thomas Partey We're still waiting for Jesus, Tomiyasu and Zinchenko but hopefully they are not too far away all right that's it from me so far today I'm going to be around town in Porto for the remainder of the day I'm going to try and do quite a bit of filming I think so at some point tomorrow hopefully I might do put up a video of sort of behind the scenes of today basically at Porto from being out there with the fans in the city centre to get into the to the game, what it's like behind the scenes in the press conference room downstairs, around the tunnel, the mix zone, all that sort of stuff. So I'll try and do a little collage of what it's like. And also I'll try and do, of course, my player ratings and match reaction video a little bit later on today. Can't actually remember what time I fly out in the morning. So hopefully I'm going to have time to do my sort of more in-depth reaction video uh, in the morning. So, um, yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, 
even no matter what time I'm flying tomorrow, so I'm going to still try and do it. So, uh, yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that. But for me so far here in Porto, I'm heading off. Thank you very much for watching or listening. Do have a very good day. I hope you don't get too nervous waiting for the big, big game today. And yeah, keep your eyes peeled on my social media for all the usual match reporting action later on from the Dragao. Have a great day, everyone. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank <music> you.